Now let's look at some imbalances. We're going to begin by looking at the condition when you don't have enough red blood cells. In other words, when you're, thus your oxygen carrying capacity is low. Remember, you need oxygen to synthesize ATP or the majority of it through aerobic cellular respiration and you need ATP for cellular work. This condition is called anemia. There are different causes of anemia, so let's look at these. Hemorrhagic anemia is due to the loss of blood. Iron deficiency anemia is due to a lack of iron. Remember, you need iron to synthesize hemoglobin. Pernicious anemia, this is interesting. This is an autoimmune disease that is seen primarily in the elderly. The immune system attacks the mucosa or the lining of the stomach. And cells in the mucosa release a substance called intrinsic factor. Intrinsic factor is required for the absorption of B12 in your GI tract. Remember, B12 is required for DNA synthesis. Renal anemia. Renal refers to kidneys. Recall that the kidneys release the hormone erythropoietin or EPO. In this case, you have decreased levels of EPO being released. This is seen in individuals that are undergoing renal failure. Aplastic anemia. In this case, the red bone marrow has been destroyed. This could be permanent or it could be temporary. There are certain chemicals that can destroy the red bone marrow, such as benzene and gasoline, certain chemicals and pesticides and herbicides, some chemicals used in chemotherapy, also radiation, and there are some viruses such as the herpes virus, Epstein-Barr, which causes mononucleosis. Lastly, hemolytic anemia. Lysis means to break apart, and in hemolytic anemia, the red blood cell lysis. Several different causes, uh, there are several different causes for this, such as sickle cell anemia, which is a hereditary disease. It's seen primarily in uh, African Americans. The red blood cell is affected, there's a mutation in the hemoglobin, and when the hemoglobin unloads the oxygen at the tissues, the red blood cell changes its shape, becomes sickle. This can obstruct blood flow downstream, leading to decreased oxygen to tissues downstream, which can lead to damage. It can also bring about uh, pain and the weakening of the cells so that they lice. Another condition that will bring about hemolytic anemia is a blood transfusion reaction. We will talk about these in lab. Now let's look at what the condition is called when you have too many red blood cells. Polycythemia. The hematocrit will be increased and so will the viscosity. If the blood becomes too thick, it will move too slowly through your vessels and this can lead to unwanted blood clotting. Remember that the hematocrit will go up there are two types that I'm going to look at. Polycythemia vera, which is actually a mutation. This mutation usually occurs after birth, so it's not a mutation that you inherit through your parents. In this case, a protein that is involved in regulating the production of red blood cells is mutated. Therefore, red blood cell production is not controlled and you have increased red blood cell numbers. Secondary polycythemia can occur through several different mechanisms. Blood doping, and in blood doping, this occurs in um, athletes will carry this out. They will remove red blood cells, and then they can, uh, your body will return red blood cell levels back to normal, and then you can reintroduce the red blood cells at a later date right before an athletic event, and this will increase your oxygen carrying capacity. The other way to do this is to administer EPO. 
Again, this will increase red blood cell production and therefore increase oxygen carrying capacity. So the advantage of this is more oxygen will allow you to synthesize more ATP for muscle contraction. Another cause for secondary polycythemia is increased altitude. As you go up in altitude, the amount of oxygen in the air decreases. And due to this, you're going to have a hypoxic condition and the kidneys then will release EPO and this will increase erythropoiesis, increasing red blood cell counts. And this is to try to maintain oxygen levels uh, within the normal range in the blood.